Hello, all. Uh, my name is Ryan Greenwood. I'm with People's Action on the Healthcare for All team, and I lead our Care Over Cost campaign. At People's Action, we build the power of poor and working people in urban, rural, and suburban areas to win change through issue fights and elections. We're a, we're a national network made up of 40 state and local grassroots power building organizations in 29 states. Uh, and we're all united in the work of building a bigger we. We've launched an organizing revival to address the triple threat of rising authoritarianism, social isolation, and the climate crisis. And you can find more about us at peoplesaction.org. Huge, huge thanks to Healthcare Now for inviting us to submit this session for this uh, super important Medicare for All Strategy Summit. Uh, we thank you for your leadership at Healthcare Now and, and are with you in the fight for a national single payer healthcare system uh, because access to healthcare is uh, basic human dignity. It is a human right. In this session, we're going to talk about the Care Over Cost campaign to fight care denials by private health insurance corporations. We'll cover the problem the campaign is fighting to solve how it fits with the overall strategy to win and improve Medicare for all, what we've been doing on the campaign, and why we're really focusing on United Healthcare, um, the largest for-profit health insurance corporation on the planet, and how you can join us in this fight. So our history on this is that our, our predecessor organizations like uh, Citizen Action, uh, U.S. Action, helped fight for the passage of the Affordable Care Act. And when the Supreme Court forced Medicaid expansion to become a state issue, many of our state organizations like Maine People's Alliance and Missouri Jobs with Justice and Down Home North Carolina were at the heart of state campaigns to expand Medicaid. And as a result of that great work, over 91% of people in this country have health insurance. But as you all know, because you're uh, attending this uh, Medicare for All Strategy Conference, uh, health insurance is not health care. And increasingly, our members from Maine to Colorado, West Virginia to Wisconsin, were telling us that the big obstacle to them getting the care they need, a specialist visit, medicine, surgery, or another procedure, the big obstacle isn't lack of health insurance, it is the health insurance corporations themselves. They're the obstacle. And now, now we get it, y'all. <laughs> when People's Action launched in 2016, we got delegates together from our member groups, we're democratically governed, and, and they voted that the North Star for our healthcare organizing needs to be an improved Medicare for all. So we're, so we're there with you. And that's not our only goal. There are important fights to expand Medicaid that our groups like Citizen Action of Wisconsin are, are driving in the Badger State and important work in the South and, and all over the country to include immigrants um, and public programs. Uh, our groups like Citizen Action of New York and Connecticut Citizen Action Group are supporting those fights. And even if we win and improve Medicare for all, we're still going to have big problems in our healthcare system. I mean, for example, the fact that the police are the uh, frequent interveners when people are in a mental health crisis and, and that, you know, pharma and profit seeking hospital chains are still uh, separating uh, the money people need for care and, and sending it to shareholders. But we're clear. Private health insurance companies add no value to the healthcare system, and that's why an improved Medicare for all is our North Star. They only subtract, but we're never going to transform our system without that improved Medicare for all. But what we heard more and more from our from people is that care denials by their private health insurance corporation is the biggest problem people are facing today. We really started digging in and seeing the scale of this problem. And, and you all know, health insurance corporations use claim denials where they deny payment after you got the care, but they're sticking you with the bill. Prior authorization denials where they where they stop you from getting the care but before you receive it. And inadequate networks, so you're stuck with the bill because you can't get to a facility where your insurance company will pay full freight. These are all the different ways where 
private health insurance corporations stop people from getting the care they need, resulting people in getting sicker, injured, staying injured for longer or dying before their time? Or were those same health insurance corporations refuse to pay, sticking us with the bill? Um, some facts about this scale of this. Private health insurance corporations deny care well over 248 million times annually. That's a problem that hurts all of us, maybe except for the very rich executives at the insurance corporations themselves. But we know that black and brown people receive more denials because they're sold worse insurance products. And people in rural America are hurt by inadequate networks because they've got less choices of a hospital to go to and are more likely to have to put up with going to a hospital that is out of network and getting a big bill because their insurer won't pay in full. This problem is especially bad when within privatized Medicaid called managed care, uh, where corporations like United Healthcare deny care over 13% of the time. Um, and that's according to the Office of the Inspector General for the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Um, in fact, they found in one especially hard hit state, United Healthcare denied people on Medicaid care one out of every four times they needed it, where a doctor said, you need this care, United Health wouldn't uh, pay, refuse the care for those people one out of every four times in, in one state alone. Now, these insurance corporations, well, they say that they got an appeals process to deal with this problem, but we know that, less, that people appeal less than 0.2% of the time. Well, why? It's a burdensome process with a bunch of paperwork and it's rigged. The insurance companies at the first couple steps of the appeals process select the person reviewing the appeal and they pay them. Now, I'm based here in Minnesota and our Minnesota Timberwolves just won a hard fought series to defeat the Denver Nuggets to go to the National Basketball Association Western Finals. Well, what if Minnesota picked and paid the refs for that series and the refs made the calls for Minnesota 60% of the time? Would Denver fans be outraged? Yeah, you betcha. And that's the deal with the appeals process. But it's not a game. People's health and lives are at, at stake here. Um, and it's rigged as it's currently constructed. And you all know these corporations take huge profits. So United Healthcare alone, the most profitable health insurance corporation in the country, took $22.4 in profits last year while denying care that doctors ordered millions of times. That ain't right. So we, seeing the scale of this problem, we began to fight back. Here's what we've been doing. We reached out into communities to find out who's been denied care or payment for care by a private health insurance corporation. Like, who's this happening to right now? We built a national appeals team, some volunteer lawyers, healthcare workers, and former healthcare billers, and people who've had to fight their own denials to help people through the appeals process. And we run public fight back campaigns where through social media, protests, um, you know, talking with uh, the TV media, newspapers, petitions, et cetera, we highlight specific cases of care denials and demand insurance corporations pay out. And we're winning care for people, but we're not going to win care for 248 million people denied it one case at a time. So we're using this campaign to, to change the narrative. Right now, people who, um, who you know haven't been denied life-saving care feel like their insurance company is annoying. That's it. We want to share the stories of what happens when people are denied life-saving care or are forced to go into medical debt or bankruptcy because their insurer won't pay. And we're building a base of people who have private insurance and know that it doesn't work and that it won't be there uh, for you when you need it. Uh, to demand change in the whole system. So we're ringing the alarm bell that, hey, if you haven't experienced a life uh, 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 a denial that uh, for life-saving care, it's coming for you or coming for somebody else that you love. And we're moving a public policy agenda in Congress and developing one for state legislatures to rein in the ability of these corporations to deny people care 
claw back their profits and invest it in the public system so people can get the care they need without the profiteers getting in the way. So this is sort of the lane of power building we think we need to reduce the power of private health insurance corporations, get more care for people while we're building a base of people who are harmed by private health insurance corporations to win and improve Medicare for all. And but, you know, with all that, this issue isn't just facts and strategy. It directly destroys individual people's lives. Um, so let me tell you how this issue impacts me and other people we've organized with. A couple of years ago, I got injured enough so that my wife needed to call 911. An ambulance came. They took me to the ER. I got patched up, sent home, and then I got the bill. Blue Cross Blue Shield, my insurer, wouldn't pay for the ambulance ride because the company was out of network. As if when I was screaming in pain, my wife should have vetted the ambulance company to see if they took my insurance. So now we've got medical debt as a result. This issue impacts people like Melinda, a Citizen Action of New York member in Syracuse. Melinda's insurer, another Blue Cross Blue Shield affiliate, wouldn't pay for an $8,000 lab bill. It took months of our fighting, publicly shaming the corporation protest to get the bill paid. It's people like Mark Hall uh, down in Springfield, Missouri, a Missouri Jobs and Justice member. Mark's insurer, uh, Cigna, wouldn't pay for the medicine that was working for Mark's ulcerative colitis. So he endured incredible pain as a result because Cigna values its profits more than the people it insures. We're going to hear now from Carly Morton from Beaver, Pennsylvania. Carly was de denied a life-saving surgery by United Healthcare. Carly suffered from a condition called neurogenic median arcuate ligament syndrome. Carly had not been able to eat in years and was malnourished and had a majority chance of dying within the next five years when we met her when she was 29 years old. Her doctors recommended a surgery to save and transform her life, but her insurer, United Healthcare, Carly's on a, a privatized Medicare Advantage plan, um, refused the surgery. They denied her care. Well, thousands of people took action on Carly's behalf. Our, a retired insurance lawyer from our national appeals team helped her file appeals. Her, her U.S. Senator, Senator Casey in Pennsylvania, contacted United on her behalf. We shamed United Healthcare into prior authorizing the surgery. So she got it and it saved and transformed Carly's life. But United still won't pay the surgeon. They still won't pay their bill. So we're going to hear directly from Carly about her journey to get life-saving care and why she's fighting to transform the whole system. Carly? Thank you. Yes, it's true. With care over cost and all of the hard work people's actions did, gathering petition signatures and bringing attention to my case, I was able to finally get the surgery that I needed. That's amazing, Carly, and it's proof, y'all, that win. Sir. But let's go back for a minute to last summer with a video about what it was like for Carly before. More proud I couldn't be of anything. Well, if you hadn't helped me whenever I came in 2017, I probably wouldn't be alive. Very possible. So. And we're hoping the next step takes you over the top. <laughs> well, we talked about how there's some things with no cure. We have, I have to, I'm gonna have to live a little differently forever. I know. I have to crush anything that's not liquid, which is actually most of them at this point. Um, anything that liquefies though, I can I put through the J port of my tube, which is this part where the food goes, bypasses my stomach completely. And then this does go to my stomach. Some medications have to go into this side. Um, but as much can go in this side as possible because the disease exists in my stomach. So 
anything that goes in there causes me really bad pain that physicians compare the pain of the disease to end-stage pancreatic cancer pain. I have been fighting my medical issues in my insurance company off and on for more than a year. I cried and screamed and requested a supervisors. They made it impossible. I thought that that was the end of the road. I'm not getting the surgery, so there's not much of a chance for me. We reached out to People's Action, and they gathered together around me and helped me fight my insurance company. And then when that change happened, it was like all this hope just went inside of me. And I felt not just hopeful, but I felt like I had, because of what I had survived and experienced, the special kind of power and energy in me um, pushing me to make things different. I want it to be different for everybody. My name is Doyle, and I'm with Progressive Maryland. I stand today for clean air. So my name is Stephanie Johnson, and I'm representing the Vocal Kentucky. And we're fighting for political power. And that is why we are launching the Organizing Revive. Advocating for change is so damn important. Wow, that brings back so many emotions for me, Carly. And I'm so glad that you're here with us tonight and that you're feeling so much stronger. So tell us what's happened since I last saw you. So um, on July 20th, 2023, I had my open stomach surgery. My surgery was a success and it changed my life. For the first time, I'm able to eat without pain or digestive distress. I enjoy eating so many different foods now, pumpkin spice, stir fry, and my absolute favorite is sushi. I also love fresh fruit. Since the surgery, I have gained both weight and muscle and have progressed from physical therapy for post-sepsis issues to actual strength training. From the time that I was on the feeding tube and at my lowest weight to now, I've happily gained 33 pounds and have significantly increased my muscle mass. I have seen, even progressed to being able to deadlift 150 pounds. Most importantly, nearly all of my chronic conditions have stabilized, including my autoimmune issues. I am no longer chronically malnourished, I am off the feeding tube, and my lab work is excellent. There are a few things left to stabilize, but overall, I am leaps and bounds healthier than I was or ever have been in my life. I feel so much stronger than I ever really have, and I feel confident that I could beat those odds that come with my medical issues and history of septic infections. To say that this surgery improved the quality of my life is an understatement. I don't think I ever really fully lived before. I am really everything, even the small things, so much right now because they are so surreal without the intensive pain and lack of energy due to malnourishment. I don't feel scared that I'm going to die or doomed to a life of pain anymore. I feel hopeful for my future, which I've never felt before. This surgery saved me 100%. Unfortunately, I do have a negative update regarding United Healthcare. They are still refusing to pay for the costs of the surgery. My surgeon's office is fighting with them and they are not asking me to pay for anything or take any action at this time. But for me, this means that I still have the threat of a large bill that I will never be able to pay looming over my head, a mental and emotional stressor that I should never have to worry about or face. The way that those of us who are dependent on insurance plans like United Healthcare have to fight for our care is absolutely detrimental to our mental and emotional health. And changes to the system are absolutely necessary at this point. But I will say, I'm not going to pay for this surgery. 
it is estimated to be between fifty and eighty thousand dollars for the cost of everything altogether, which is an atrocity in itself because it was life-saving care. Regardless, I got less than a thousand dollars per month to live off of from Social Security, and I have debt because I can't always afford the things that I need right now. I'm still in the recovery process, and I don't know what the future holds for me, whether I will be able to work part or full time or what I will be doing. What I do know is that I spent the first 30 years of my life suffering terribly because of this disease, and now I don't have to. So I'm going to live as much as I can. I deserve that. I deserve health and happiness and peace. I shouldn't have to worry about and or be forced to break my back over an 80 gram bill that was never supposed to be my responsibility and is in fact not my responsibility. Healthcare is a basic need and a human right. I shouldn't have to kill myself trying to afford the things I need to save myself and I won't. I will continue to advocate for widespread change and help other people obtain the care they need as much as I can now. Thank you. Thanks, Carly, for sharing your story of standing up, fighting back, going public, and organizing with others to win the care you needed and, and to call for a transformed system. The reason we're focusing on United is that they're the most profit-taking health insurance corporation in the, in the country. Here's some just some examples. In, two, in 2022, United Healthcare CEO Brian Thompson was paid $9,800,000. $9,800,000. That could have paid for Carly's surgery alone 200 times over. Between the five years, uh, between 2018 and 2022, 20, uh, United Health Group CEO, the parent corporation for United Healthcare, Sir Andrew Witte, extracted over 90 million in executive and bay board pay just for himself. That's just one human at United Health Group that took $90 million that could have gone, gone to life-saving care for people like Carly. United Health Group took $22.4 billion in profit in 2023 alone. They sent $14.8 billion to shareholders through buybacks and dividends in 2023 alone. And in April of this year, they reported taking $7 billion in profits so far in 2024 in just the first three months. And they're doing this, like how do they prop up a system that allows them to take this profit while denying people like Carly Care? Well, they spent three million in political contributions and six million on lobbying in 2022 alone to buy the political class. So while we're taking on individual cases like Carly's, we're also demanding the corporation stop denying care and, and asking our legislators to rein them in. We sent a, a, a letter to United Healthcare with, with a set of demands, uh, including things like executing a publicly shared audit, reimbursing federal and state governments in uh, for the public money diverted uh, by claim and prior authorization denials within Medicaid managed care and Medicare, the privatized version, Medicare Advantage. We want them to stop overbilling uh, Medicare. Uh, by these uh, Medicare Advantage plans. We want them to stop denying claims and overturn existing denials for treatments recommended by medical professionals, expedite the payment of claims, stop denying claims, and um, overturn existing denials for treatments covered by Medicare and Medicaid rules, cease the practice of using artificial intelligence and algorithms to initiate claim denials in bulk, make public the details of denied claims and prior authorizations by market, plan, state, geography, gender, disability, and race. Disclose the, the monetary value of these denied claims. Actually hold quarterly open uh, microphone meetings with your policyholders to discuss the problems they're having with your insurance products. Um, they do that for the shareholders to discuss their profits every quarter. Uh, they should do it with the people whose lives they, uh, uh, they harm by denying them care. And we want them to relinquish ownership and transfer over the claim appeals process to relevant public authorities. 
Um, we've been demanding an in-person meeting uh, and we want them to cease overriding the people with who need care by lobbying and donating uh, your policyholders' money to politicians, campaigns, PACs, and other entities um, that advocate for or against the defeat um, of elected officials. So this is just kind of a set of demands on one corporation uh, to clean up um, their problems with denying care. Um, we demanded they meet with us. They didn't agree to meet with us. So 120 people denied care by United and their supporters took over United's lobby and won a meeting with the corporation. Let's see a video of that right now. We are health professionals, workers, retirees, health justice activists, and all of us are patients. We are here today in your lobby because everyone, everyone should have access to quality health care, regardless of their race, gender, or where they live. Hot off the press from this morning, United Health reported a revenue of $99.8 billion for the first quarter of 2024. I'm here to show solidarity because I suffer from um, being under covered by my health care and inadequate health care, uh, just like the folks here in Minnesota are and every state across the nation. And we have traveled from all over today to come out here and share the message that we need to put people over profit. Uh, health care is a human right and we're not going to take it anymore. We're here to fight. What is our goal of being here today? Well, that's simple. Our goal is to demand action and accountability. We are here to demand that your unscrupulous practices of denying medications and care to patients you serve ends now. We demand United Health Group take the following steps to remedy this situation. Execute a publicly shared audit and reimburse the federal and state governments for the public money they diverted by claim and prior authorization denials within Medicaid and Medicare, Medicare Advantage. This isn't right. This is not health care. It's killing people. It's putting them in situations where their health is becoming worse and we have to stop it. It's all because of profit and greed and it has to end. I'm sick of losing my friends. I've spent the last year begging you for a $600 infusion to treat the most painful disease known to modern medicine, CRPS, complex regional pain syndrome, the suicide disease. Let me tell you, a year ago while United Healthcare was celebrating over $8 billion in first quarter profits, I was selling the last of my belongings that had any value. Now I'm standing in your lobby. Do you hear me now? I don't want to die. Do you hear me, United Healthcare? Your greed makes us sick. Your greed makes us sick. Who said on you all my people? Who said on you all my people? We have a set of demands for United Healthcare Group we have shared. So far, they have not been listening to us. So we are also calling on our elected officials. If United Healthcare Group and other insurers won't make these changes voluntarily, it is up to our elected officials to protect us. We have a commitment from the Corporate Communications Director for the Healthcare Group, the parent company for all of these companies in this whole complex, to be in touch with, them, with us within five days to set up a meeting with our members to hear our stories directly. The situation where a private company that makes money off of our health can make the decisions about what kind of care we get is an injustice and um, we need to bring that message clearly to United, clearly to elected officials who can make decisions about the laws governing these companies um, and to the public to help people know that um, the harm that they're experiencing at the hands of these companies is not their fault and we can actually fight back.
Wow. So that's what it looks like when 120 people show up and take over the lar lobby of the fifth largest corporation in the country uh, for about 55 minutes there in mid-April of this year. Well, United Healthcare still didn't agree to our demands, so we protested their CEO at a U.S. Senate hearing in Washington, D.C. Let's see a, a minute tape of that. It was a life-saving surgery. I, I was in critical condition. I had sepsis and almost died. I needed the surgery. And prior, the, first we had to get a whole bunch of petitions, and I was spent hours and months crying on the phone just to get the surgery approved while I was critically ill, calling for my wife. Then when, when after the public pressure campaign, when we got it approved, now they're still not paying it. They're, they're fighting with the surgeon's office instead of me, but they're still not paying it. You gave a prior authorization. She they, gets the surgery, and now you take the prior authorization okay. back, and you don't pay the bill. And you've done that to her. You've done that to her. You've done it to me. Yeah. You're killing our providers. You're taking our lives. I'm tired of fighting to stay alive, Thank and you. I'm tired of burying my friends. I'm tired of suffering. Stop using prior authorizations to kill people. Thank you for sharing. And finally, I want to note that, you know, this is not just People's Action and our member organizations alone. We've done this with awesome allied organizations uh, like like our member groups, like Progressive Maryland um, in, in that great state, like Be a Hero, um, the Minnesota Nurses Association, Physicians for National Health Plan, the AFL-CIO Retirees of Minnesota, Labor Campaign for Single Payer, Social Security Works, Healthcare for All Minnesota, and many, many more. So this is really going to uh, take a movement to to take down uh, corporations like United Healthcare and and demand care for the people that they insure. Uh, we want you to join us. Uh, go to careovercost.org to sign up to share your story about how you've been denied care by a private health insurance corporation or or to stand in solidarity with others who have been denied care. We'd love to keep organizing with you. Uh, thank you so much for your time in, in watching this uh, session at Healthcare Now's uh, 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 Strategy Summit on Medicare for All. And if you want to talk more with me individually, you can reach out to me at r.greenwood at peoplesaction.org. Thanks so much, y'all. Together we will win and improve Medicare for All.